What is an algorithm? It's surprisingly simple. Basically, it's a recipe, a list of precise instructions with a definite ending. And you may not realize this, but they're actually everywhere. Even your humble washing machine at home is run with an algorithm. Yet, in a survey I carried out recently on 100 random adults, a quarter thought algorithms are evil. Now, I create and analyze algorithms in my work, and I love what I do, but this is not how I think of myself. But then how could algorithms be evil? Perhaps the respondents were thinking of an evil robot with superhuman intelligence. Perhaps they were thinking of the spread of fake news and harmful content, or hackers stealing away your personal data, or that creepy feeling you get when the same ad follows you everywhere. So then perhaps there are reasons to be afraid. But at the same time, we are using and interacting with algorithms every day, and their role in our lives is only increasing. So then how can we ensure algorithms work to serve us, not abuse us? Thankfully, you don't need to be an algorithmic expert to join in this discussion. But there are some basics that you need to know. So let me guide you through some fundamental truths about algorithms so that you can join in this debate. First of all, algorithms have been with us for millennia. Throughout human history, there's been a lot of effort into developing algorithms that solve particular problems. And the oldest known algorithm dates back to Euclid in 300 BC. And if you look at the history of developments in algorithms, you'll see that it coincides with advances in human knowledge. And today, we enjoy the fruits of all these efforts. After all, without algorithms, we wouldn't have bridges and buildings, cars and trains, satellites and mobile phones. Algorithms can even help save lives, for instance, by helping an ambulance find the shortest road to a hospital, or by helping a complex organ donation system find optimal matches. And in more recent years, we have seen a rise of algorithms that interact with us, as opposed to solving problems in science and engineering. Think Google search engine, product recommendations on Amazon, or image recognition on Facebook. And so this brings me to the second fundamental. Increasingly, algorithms are used in uncertain human domains. So in the past, uh, we had mostly numerical algorithms. And these algorithms solved deterministic problems. In other words, problems with knowable solutions. And now the focus has shifted recently to algorithms that operate in uncertain environments. And these are called machine learning algorithms. At a high level, machine learning algorithms operate by training on data sets, meaning they uh, learn patterns from what happened in the past and make recommendations um, for unseen scenarios. Now, uh, these uh, machine learning algorithms are extremely useful for complex and uncertain tasks, such as predicting human behavior. You know, which web page are you looking for? What ad are you most likely to click on? Now, as more and more people use these machine learning algorithms, more training data is generated, and so the algorithm gets smarter. And hence the name is a machine that learns. So many machine learning algorithms are designed to interact with us. But the thing is, because we as human beings, we don't behave in orderly manner all the time, 
And so we create the uncertainty for these algorithms to operate in. And this uncertainty can cause problems. Well, first of all, with uncertainty, there may be no objective truth. I think we can all agree that one plus one is two. London is the capital of the United Kingdom. And so these are examples of objective truths. What then is not an objective truth? Well, if anybody here has ever used a dating app, you would know how exciting it is to get a 90% match, but then go on a terrible date. <laughs> now, I'm not too worried about dating apps, actually, but I am worried about other applications of machine learning algorithms where there may be no objective truth. So just as people use uh, dating apps to find relationships, companies can use recruitment algorithms to find workers. And if these algorithms are trained on employer data, which discriminated against certain people in the past, then the bias will perpetuate. And needless to say, this has serious implications for tackling discrimination, for instance, against women or ethnic minorities for uh, certain high-powered positions. So now, are there any remedies? I can think of a few. First of all, use several different algorithms. Because if there is no objective truth, then different algorithms would present different advantages and disadvantages. Second, use algorithms to enhance, not replace human judgment. After all, you wouldn't marry that first recommendation from the dating app, would you? And finally, keep channels for direct human contact open, just as you may meet the person you're looking for, not online, but say, at your local health club. With uncertainty, there are margins of error. One of the most successful uses of machine learning has been in filtering out your spam emails. I mean, just think how annoying your daily routine would be if every morning you have to sift through for real emails amongst a sea of requests for your bank account details. But we all know that spam filters are not perfect. And so every now and then, we scan through the spam folder just in case we missed an important email. But let's take a look at a different example. Consider a political election between two candidates. Your favorite is candidate A, who has 70% chance of winning, and candidate B has only 30% chance of winning. Now, I wouldn't blame you if, given those odds, you would stay at home. I mean, 70% is a large number to, mo uh, to most people. But now I wonder how your decision to vote may differ if you're told instead that candidate A's chance of winning is not 70%, but rather somewhere between 45 and 95%. And candidate B's chance of winning is somewhere between 5 and 55%. So with those margins of error, candidate B may have higher chance of winning than candidate A. And I would like to think people who support candidate A would be getting out there if this was the information that you were given. In 2016, leading up to the US presidential elections, Hillary Clinton was a clear leader in the polls. I was in New York City at the time, and I watched the election live in a local club. And I remember the astonished faces as the results favoring Donald Trump started coming in. And as I looked around the room at the stunned faces, I, I couldn't help but wonder how many Democrats stayed at home that day, confident that Hillary would win. And I also wondered how the results may differ 
had the margins of error been clearly communicated. By the way, the point I'm trying to make here is independent of any political uh, views. <laughs> um, the fact is, if algorithms operate in uncertainty, there are margins of error, and we ought to know about them. Just as we scan through our, our, spam, field, our spam folders, in case there was a mistake. At LBS, I teach a course on decision and risk analysis. And one of the fundamental points I make in the course is that with uncertainty, there are risks. So if algorithms operate in uncertain human environments, then they will pose risks to humans. And as I mentioned earlier in the talk, we are already seeing some of these issues blow up. It's the spread of fake news and harmful content, cyberbullying, theft of personal data. Now, it's easy to point the finger at the creators of the algorithms, but I don't think these issues can be solved by a single company alone or by throwing more algorithms and technology to it. Because after all, we have these complex social issues like, um, like lies, bullying, and theft in the offline world as well. And many people have to work together to address these complex social challenges. So now, I don't think there are simple solutions for complex social challenges, especially if they're exacerbated by scalable algorithms. But I think a good starting point, whenever we have some powerful um, or a heavily used algorithm, I think a good starting point is a risk assessment exercise. Who are the stakeholders? In other words, who could get hurt? What could go wrong and how likely are they? What are the consequences? And how Importantly, how can we prevent and mitigate these risks? Algorithms have been silent but powerful partners to the greatest dreams dreamt by mankind, calculating the trajectories of stars, sending people to the moon. But as we increasingly use algorithms in human environments, we're starting to see their perilous possibilities. But we must remember that we have the ultimate power and responsibility to shape our algorithmic future. Thank you.